Perfect. Perfect. What is going on everybody? I go by RB and this is Philly Take with RB. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and smash the like button. Hit the subscribe if you're new and ding the notification bell so you're instantly notified whenever I upload or go live. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you to everyone who came out to the draft night stream, showed some love, some energy. It was five hours and it was so much fun. Can't thank you guys enough. Almost 10,000 people tuned in at one point during the stream. I took the day off yesterday to kind of think about things as a whole, listen to some interviews and all this and that. Um, and overall, I just want to put this man up on the screen. For once in my YouTube, I guess, career, whatever you want to call it, for once in, the, in these first 11 months, I can't believe I'm saying it, but since Brett coached his last game against the Celtics, all the buttons have been pushed right. And for once, I can say I have 100% faith in the Sixers front office and organization. It is a beautiful thing. Job well done, Daryl Morey. I, I mean, round of applause. <laughs> this guy is insane. He's amazing. This whole, ever since Brett got fired, everything has been going right. It's unbelievable, man. Daryl Morey did what the Sixers organization couldn't do the entire last year in one night. He addressed three areas that we desperately needed to. He picked up shooting. He picked up a primary guard, a ball handler who can hopefully develop into being a star guard for this team one day, can play alongside our stars in Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. He picked up young talent uh, for the future that looks impressive, right? Didn't make really any bad picks. And overall, he got rid of two pitiful contracts and cleared up 10 to 12 million dollars in cap space before we give all, all my final thoughts and everything just one quick piece of news i saw today that the sixers waived norvell pell who was a defensive prowess for this team um off the bench for a few minutes a game and we also waived mariel shayok which was surprising to me given the fact he was a second round pick last year showed some shooting upside i thought he would be able to develop maybe make the roster under doc rivers but both of those are gone looks like paul reed can hopefully fill in the shoes of a norvell pell or he maybe even be better um and free agency starts tonight at 6 p.m eastern standard time and we will cover it one name I've heard to keep your eyes on is the former process sixer Nerlens Noel maybe could come back and be our backup center off the bench anyway talking about this draft man um again Daryl Morey is insane let's start with the Al Horford thing I don't know why I have to continually explain this to people like I'm getting massive dms about this telling me that it was a terrible trade are you kidding me Daryl Morey cleared the worst contract maybe in Sixers history of Al Horford for a 2025 first rounder, a second rounder, <laughs> and Al, I mean, come on. He cleared Al Horford and got rid of a first and second, and that's all we had to give up. I expected us to give up a whole way more to get rid of that terrible word for contract and in exchange oh people don't like Danny Green well let me tell you something Daryl Morey since day one of his job has said we must complement our stars better you know I think at the phase of our franchise uh, that's really important we, we have two young superstars in their prime uh, and you want to put around them guys who can they can build with and that is what he is doing we'll talk about it more in depth but the point is we got a shooter in here who shot 40% over his career. We'll talk about whether we like him or not. But what I do know is he fits the team better than Al Horford and he doesn't cost $27 million a year. I don't understand how people can say this is a bad trade. Obviously, you don't watch the team. It was an impressive trade and the fact that he got OKC to take that contract away and we cleared up $12 million based on that and Josh Richardson, which we'll talk about. It's, it's impressive, man. It's unbelievable. A great trade for the Philadelphia 76ers right before the draft. Now, going forward, we'll talk about Tyrese Maxey. Let me put this picture up. You can see this kid loves the process. I've watched a couple interviews, especially the post-draft ones. He seems very impressive. He seems like he's a hard worker. He gets up at like 4 or 5 in the morning, goes to the gym, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Now, let's get one thing out of the way. Tyrese Maxey is not a bad pick. He is a solid pick. Tyrese Maxey, I said it in the reaction video. 
He's a solid pick. I had him on my mock draft the night before. I had him on my mock draft the day of. Go and check my Twitter. I had him as a sleeper first round pick in my sleeper video for a reason. He was like my fourth option, third or fourth option, but behind Desmond Bain, Tyrell Terry, and Cole Anthony. Look, when you don't get the top guy that you want, you're going to be frustrated. But at the end of the day, I said he was a solid pick. I'm happy about him starting his future in Philadelphia. And I, like I said before, this guy can lock down guards. He's hopefully going to become our primary ball handler. He's athletic. He's a finisher. Six foot three, 198 pounds. He's ready to go from day one, and he's going to be able to contribute. And the main thing, like I said in the stream, was Doc Rivers stressed the importance of defense. He's making this a defensive identity, which kind of worries me, given the fact that last year we tried to do the same thing, and it didn't work out. But there's the difference between having your faith in Brett Brown versus Doc Rivers. If we truly are trying to make a defensive identity type of team and Tyrese Maxey is there, well, I think it was the perfect pick then. I think it was a solid pick. And going even forward, look, again, Tyrese Maxey is a solid pick and I'm happy with him and I'm going to support him. And if he develops that upside and starts to become that shooter that I think he can be in the future, well, he might be one of the best guards in the draft. But here is why the pick looks even better a day or two later. Because... Daryl Morey addressed all of the needs of the Sixers. I was worried about shooting because we passed on a top guy like Terry. But we go and get shooting. Shooting. We got Danny Green. We got Seth Curry. The next one, Seth Curry. We traded for Seth Curry and got rid of Josh Richardson's miserable contract at the, at the same time and gave up a second round pick. That is beautiful. People are clowning, oh, Seth Curry can't shoot, oh, this, oh, that. Took him a while to become who he is. Who cares? Do you know Seth Curry has the second highest three-point percentage in the history of the game? And I know he hasn't played as much as starters because he's more so of a role player. But it doesn't matter. When you get opportunities, you got to take them and you got to knock down. Minimum of a 1,000 attempts. Seth Curry has the second highest percentage. The Duke can shoot. He can come off dribble handoffs. He can roam around the perimeter. He can even handle the ball a little bit. So I think it's a perfect trade, and it's flawless, and it makes me feel much better about the maxi pick. So I'm very satisfied. And again, I don't hate Josh Richardson, but it just didn't work out. Seth Curry is much better as a shooter and much better as a compliment piece than Josh Richardson was. Beautiful. Then we go ahead and pick up Isaiah Joe, who's another 3 and D player. Averaged almost one and a half steals a game and also shot well on 10 and a half threes a game. I said in my second round picks video, this guy was going to be a steal after you guys put me on to him. Yes, he regressed a little bit, but at the same time, he's a, he's a free flow type of guy. He's going to let it fly, confident, 3 and D guy, just has to get into some better shape. But he's another piece I can expect to contribute in his rookie year from day one. He appears to me as a very smart type of player. I heard his interviews as well. Seems very stoked for the opportunity. We heard the Sixers and made a promise to him, and I'm happy that he was there, and I'm happy about it. That's two shooters that we add. In addition to Danny Green, that's three shooters that we're adding to the team, and we're not done yet. And going forward to our last pick, Paul Reed. The more I watch this guy, I'd watch a little bit on him before the draft, but man, he's a defensive you know, type of mindset player. Averaging two blocks a game. Can move around. Apparently is going to hopefully play some small ball at the five when Joel Embiid's off the court. Maybe he can even step in and play some meaningful minutes from day one. Give him ten minutes a night. The dude can move around. He can shoot a little bit. He's becoming a stretch. I think that would make him a much better prospect. Um, his shot's a little funky. But at the same time, he has hit some three-pointers. He hits them from mid-range. Um, and overall, Paul Reed is a guy that can play alongside Ben in the up-tempo, in the, in the transition. Paul Reed is a big man, but he can also move speed, athleticism, interior finishing, something that we desperately needed off the bench, especially after Al Horford is gone. It's a great pick. I had him mocked in my 30s. I saw people that might have even had him in the early 30s, and we got him at 58. So that's a great pick. This was the first draft in a long time where I can truly say there are no bad picks. I know we only picked three guys, but there's no picks where I'm like, who is that or what or why do we do that? No. I said every guy was solid and given the fact that we addressed every area of concern that we wanted to going into this draft, well overall I think it was a solid draft. If I had to grade it, I'm giving him an A. 
I'm giving Daryl Morey an A on his first draft because at the end of the day, he got us a guard, he got us a ball handler, and he got us shooting and got rid of contracts. No more Al Horford and Joel Embiid double big man lineups. No more, you know, no space inside the paint. None of that. No. This Sixers team is doing everything they can to head in the right direction. Are we a championship contender yet? Well, we might need some more pieces to fill up some holes. But at the end of the day, people want to clown these guys. No, we got better and we complimented our stars. We're not trading Ben or Joe. We are building around them. Danny Green, say what you want. Yeah, he was miserable in the playoffs, but he has been a decent shooter. He's won the last two championships, and he's a 40% shooter from behind the arc for his career. Seth Curry, a 44% shooter from behind the arc for his career. This is exactly what we wanted to be delivered. We, we have changed the, the, out, the outlook. We've changed the scope of this franchise right now. And we still have a month to go. Free agency starting. We're going to pick up some valuable pieces. We have more cap to do so. We need depth. And at the end of the day, we have Doc Rivers, Dave Yeager, Sam Cassell, and a staff that's going to get the best out of these players on draft night. Overall, this was a heck of a draft. One of the best I've seen in years. Guys who will contribute from day one. And, and Daryl Morey just hit on every aspect that we needed to. And this is going to be a special, special season. You mark my words on that. Don't listen to what anyone else says. This Sixers team is going to contend in the East. I cannot wait. You guys let me know all your thoughts on the draft, free agency, everything else down below in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one, man. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.